Hello, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Welcome back to another episode of Meant to Bloom. I'm so happy to have you here today with me. Um, so first thing up that I want to very, very quickly mention is that my planners, um, the Everyday Joy Planner, it's totally discontinued, the Everyday Joy Planner. Let me be specific here. Um, and I have those in my Etsy shop right now, which is linked in the description. It's meant to bloom at um, dot Etsy.com. And those are all, I have like a handful in stock and they are all 50% off with free shipping. Um, you're getting these at cost plus shipping costs for me, it, like $10 planners for the next 90 days. It is very similar to my current next, um, the, the 90 day planning journals, very similar. It's just the outdated version. They're all self-dated. You can start anytime. Uh, I'm starting a brand new one on Monday, actually. So last week of January, first week of February, I'm going into a brand new next 90 day planner and I'm very excited for that. Um, but anyways, yeah, and if you're following me on my Instagram, uh, you got to vote on which option I'm going to be using next, the black floral or the rainbow leopard. Um, and I'm very, very thankful for you guys chiming in and helping out because that's one of the most difficult decisions that I think I have in my life is which planner um, because I love them so much. But anyways, so the next, the, uh, not next 90 days, the 90 day planning journals, the meant to bloom 90 day planning journal. Those are still going. Those are brand new. Those are, um, those are in the shop, the brittanyclarkson.com forward slash products. You can find and shop all of them there along with the journals and the workbooks and, uh, courses listed out as I'm starting to get courses back courses up on the new platform. Um, and I'm super excited to be able to offer these things to you guys again, um, since we were on that hiatus for a little while. But anyways, the Everyday Joy version of the planners totally discontinued. Get them while I got them. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. It's a 50% off discount. Um, just it's take advantage, take advantage, get a good sale, get a good deal. Um, anyways, so let's jump into the episode now that I mentioned that and told you about that. And hopefully those will be gone pretty soon now because I am tired of them taking up space in my office. Like, Mm, I'm just tired of it. <laughs> I need, I need the uncluttered, but I need to make back the investment on ordering the in stock. Uh, it's my own fault for discontinuing it and changing it, but yeah, I had better ideas. I wanted to improve it. So I did, I improved it. So you guys get a better version uh, of the new one. Um, anyways, anyways, I want to talk about uh, rock bottom. Yeah. Rock bottom. I feel like we don't talk about that a lot. Um, I feel like it's totally reserved for like alcoholic anonymous, alcoholics anonymous meetings and, you know, things like that. But it's like, have you ever felt like you were at rock bottom? I have told my story of the time I was at like the lowest, deepest, the deepest bottomless pit I've ever been in rock bottom. Um, June 12th, 2020. Um, we've talked about that day a handful of times on this podcast, on this episode. You can check it out. Um, I'll link it episode six, episode 88. Um, those are both ones where I really talked about this and went in depth. Um, but yeah, that was the day I almost ended my life. That was like, everything just was, I was at the bottom, right? And that is such a beautiful thing that having come out of that, having, you know, risen back up, uh, being at rock bottom is such a blessing. It's such a, there's a joy in realizing you're at rock bottom. Like that was, that was the worst day of my life. And it was the best day of my life at the same time because my eyes were opened and I decided not to end my life. I decided to live like, whoa, I could look at it as the day I almost ended my life, but instead I look at it as the day I decided to live the day I decided to start my life. My new life began that day. And that is such a beautiful, wonderful day to me. Um, like, you want to talk about like the day you were saved. Like that was it. That was God speaking to me through the forest, through the rain, uh, sun shining through the clouds telling me, Hey, you can't keep doing this. What you are doing is not sustainable. You can't keep going in these circles. You can't keep letting yourself burn out. You can't keep living life like you're depressed and expecting to not be depressed. Like, you have to make a change and that's what rock bottom is. And that's what's so beautiful is that like I've hit rock bottom a number of times that day where I almost ended it was definitely the lowest of the low and it was depression and anxiety caused and it was burnout and it was, uh, 
worldwide plant um, global pandemic happening at the same time. It was isolation. It was so much stress, so much piled on top of me. That was me focusing on burdens instead of blessings and just getting so caught up in the day to day, thousands and thousands of decisions to make every day instead of looking at the big picture of, wow, life is so freaking beautiful. That was the lowest of the low I've ever been, but I've hit rock bottom in other ways too. And the thing is, is you can be at rock bottom anytime you decide. Okay. So I had a, a difficult time with this when it came to alcohol, honestly, because um, there's so much of this like mommy wine culture and it's like, you know, you know, mommy's sippy cup is a wine glass or they have the wine glasses that just attach to the wine bottle. So you can have a whole bottle in one sitting and somehow not, you know, feel like an alcoholic because it's got a glass attachment to the top. Um to me, like this, like is <laughs> this atonement in a lot of ways. Um, it's a very sensitive, uh, in my face kind of topic. Uh, this is because I grew up around alcoholics all my life. Um, most of them have recovered, and it's been beautiful to like watch that, um, to watch that change and to see that happen to someone. And so I had this hard time talking about when I decided to go sober, which I mean. <sighs> I was going to say total transparency, but red flag came to mind. Um, <laughs> almost said red flag. Total transparency. Like I have not been 100% sober since I decided to be sober. Um, I have tried to see like, can I have a drink just to have a drink? Um, am I getting too pompous with the fact that I haven't drank in three years? Maybe I should have a drink just so that I can't, you know, you know, because I was just getting a bad air about myself with it. I wasn't being proud of myself. I was being like arrogant about it. And anyways, anyways, we don't need to go into details about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do occasionally have a drink here and there, but I would consider myself sober in the sense that like, I don't drink alone anymore. I don't day drink anymore, like as part of my normal everyday life. If I'm on vacation, sure, totally different. Um, like when I got to, when I went to Vegas with my husband last spring, I got hammered. Um but I won big at roulette. So like worth it. Right. Um, but yeah, I couldn't walk down the hallway back to my hotel room. So glad my husband was there to carry me basically. Um, <laughs> anyways, like, yeah, I'm not totally against drinking at all, but I was getting in this habit where I wanted to drink in the middle of the day when it's just me watching my boys. And that was a red flag to me. Cause I was like, wow, I'm like wanting to become an alcoholic. And I had that like this sense and this urge to just want to drink, to drink and like to just numb out everything with alcohol at really inappropriate times. And to me, that was a ginormous red flag. And to me, I said, this is rock bottom. I'm not going to let myself go lower than having that desire to drink when I need to not be drinking. I'm not going to let myself give into it. I'm going to take proactive action right now and claim sobriety in my life. And I'm going to, you know, I took the steps I needed to take to not go down that hole farther. And that can be your rock bottom. You don't have to be like ashamed that your rock bottom wasn't lower than someone else's. Don't compare your rock bottom to someone else's rock bottom. Because if I can't, if I even compared my own rock bottoms to my own rock bottoms, my rock bottom probably would have been lower in some areas, right? Um, you know, like I could have gone down farther that hole of alcoholism if I was comparing where I was with alcohol to where I was with depression. I let myself go really far down that hole of depression. I I let myself perpetuate depression in my life without being proactive and saying, I'm not going to let myself fall farther. It's one thing to like feel sad. It's one thing to have symptoms of depression, but to, to embrace it and to be like, that's my personality. That's just how I am. I'm just going to let myself, you know, be miserable and awful. That's a different thing, you know? And now in my life, like, yeah, depression episodes come in, anxiety happens, panic attacks happen. Um, it's just, it happens but I don't let it become me. I don't let it be my identity. It's, it's a roadblock. It's a stepping stone. It's not, it's not my everything the way that it had been at one time. It was my personality for a long time. And so I just want to challenge you to think about rock bottom differently. 
Because had I not thought about rock bottom differently, I might have had a very different outcome in my life. I might be in a very different place. I might be a recovering alcoholic who really struggled, who, you know, imprinted these traumatic memories on her children because I couldn't resist the urge. So sometimes your rock bottom can simply be, hey, this is as low as I'm willing to go. And it might not be very low. It might just be this desire to go down the wrong road. You can call that your rock bottom and say, it's only uphill from here. I'm turning and I'm going uphill from here. I'm not going down that slippery slope. I don't want to know what that fork in the road holds. Like if I go down that path, I don't want to know how bad it gets. I'm just going to assume it gets bad and I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to choose hope. I'm going to choose light. I'm going to choose peace. I'm going to choose ease. I'm going to choose joy. And it doesn't matter what rock bottom you're talking about. It doesn't matter what fork in the road you're talking about, whether it's you're going to keep perpetuating burnout in your life. You're going to keep being, you know, that hot mess, mommy martyr, where it's just, you know, mom life is so hard and I don't know what to do, but you're not willing to make a change. You can keep staying that way. You can keep going down that path, whether it's to do with alcohol or weed or, you know, any kind of drugs, gluttony even, like just eating really bad junk food. You could see how bad that takes you, or you could turn the other way, right? We can pivot anytime. So yeah, think of that. Every time you like, every time you reach that fork in the road, you you get this decision over and over and over again in your life. Like, I'm not going to tell you, oh, you decide to be sober. You decide to, you know, be proactive about your mental health, and then you never deal with it again. No, you're going to come to that fork in the road all the time. But making the decision the first time is the hardest, I think. I think it gets easier after that because you've already gone down the new path. You already know the new path holds abundant blessings, right? You've already seen the good that can come from turning away. So every time you're at that pivot, that that fork in the road, I want you to have, you know, Ross Geller yelling pivot in your in your head from friends. I know we all know the meme, we all know the show. Um, I, I want you to have that that hilarious moment of just pivot, pivot in your head. And I want that voice to be the one you listen to. And I want you to make light of the situation. And I want you to, I want you to just choose the joy and the humor and the fun, right? Choose the path that leads to like long-term joy. Why not? Why not? Okay. There's this awful myth out there that like moms can't have fun. I'm totally sick of it totally sick. Like I'm about to throw my phone in the toilet, sick of it that, you know, I'm constantly seeing all of this. Um, like, Oh, someone asked me what my hobbies are. I'm a mom. I enjoy going to the bathroom by myself. Like, are you kidding me? I think it's so, and I've been that mom that was like, Oh, hobbies. I don't have hobbies. I'm in survival mode of motherhood, but there comes a time when you need to exit survival mode. And yeah, the first three years are survival mode. It's rough. It's tough. You've got to, you know, focus on that silver lining of every moment because you're just covered in spit up and vomit and poop and, you know, like your body doesn't belong to you and you're not sleeping and it's rough. Those first three years, they're beautiful, but they are rough. It does take a lot out of you. It is survival mode those first three years. I'm not going to lie. But too often we stay in that survival mode. And we don't move out of it intentionally. And I think that's when we start getting really burnt out and we start feeling like motherhood's just not fun. And we start like resenting our kids and we start wishing we weren't even a mom. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. those feelings come up. I've had them. We've all had them. It happens. It's okay. Let's talk about it. Let's not push it under the rug and hide it and pretend like we didn't feel that. Um, Let's heal loudly, right? Where was my point? I lost the point. I had a big important point to make (laughs) and it's gone. Fun. Moms need to have more fun. Um, There's no reason you should be having fun as a mom. There's no reason you should be incorporating your children and your hobbies. You might have to shift your shift, shift your hobbies. You might have to shift your hobbies from what they were before kids. Like I used to do a lot of beadwork and make jewelry before I had kids. I had to stop that when I had little ones because they just messed it all up. I used to do puzzles all the time too. And then, you know, you cannot do a thousand piece puzzle with a toddler in the room. You can't. 
Um, and if you can, my goodness, you are a superwoman. Tell me your ways. Uh, but yeah, you might have to shift it. There's still ways to have fun though, because children are so good at having fun. Like you literally spend 24 seven of your life with like fun makers. Kids can find fun in anything. If you let them be that way too. learn from your children, how to have more fun, bake cookies with them. Um, just have impromptu dance parties. Have fun. Don't tell me you're a mom. So going to the bathroom alone is the highlight of your day. Don't do that. If that's you like right now, like I get being in that place. I've been there. Don't stay there. Let's make the change now. It's a fork in the road. It's time to pivot. All right. Let's pick fun. Let's pick beauty. Let's pick joy. Pick ease. Pick peace. Just pick the path that's aligned with wildflowers, not the one that's all foggy and misty and ooky and spooky and dark. And it's got like trees that look like they're going to grab you. Don't go down that way. Go down the way that is light and peaceful and full of meadows and wildflowers and little bunny rabbits and deer. Pick the path of least resistance, right? Like, don't pick what's hard because that's what you've always picked. Don't pick familiarity just because your comfort zone. Don't. It's time to make a change. It's time to make a pivot. It's time to move forward to something beautiful and exciting and wonderful. And honey, if you've been feeling like you're just buried under so much crap, I've been there. This is where healing gets to begin. This gets to be your rock bottom buried under crap. Because guess what? You're not a rock. You're a seed. Do you remember Bugs Life? When Flake shows Dot the rock and he's like, pretend it's a seed. You already have all the potential for everything you're meant to be. You're a seed. You might feel like you're in this dark, scary, cold, dank, nasty place buried under crap, but honey, you've been buried. You've been buried. Seeds get buried. And then what happens? <gasps> Go get hydrated, get some water, go drink from your thousand dollar Stanley cup and, <laughs> and hydrate yourself, take care of yourself, do the self care, do the inner work, let yourself grow, put down the roots. It's time for the seed. You know, if you were really a seed, imagine, imagine being broken open and having this fresh, delicate little seedling protruding from you. Like that's gotta hurt the seed. The outer shell, it's its big, scary, out of your comfort zone kind of change to let your seed, your hard shell be broken open so this delicate little newborn seedling can start to grow and emerge from the soil. Honey, spring is coming and you're meant to bloom. Get it? You're meant to bloom? This is what it's all about. Yeah, you're buried under crap. Crap makes really great fertilizer. Do you know what fertilizer is? Manure, horse crap, bull crap, just chicken crap. <laughs> and you know what? If you've been in like this icy, icy sort of place, I just recently found out snow is known as the poor man's fertilizer because it takes nitrogen out of the environment and puts it into the soil. So snow is a great fertilizer too. You've been wintering all winter and now, well, I mean, it's not spring yet, but it's coming. Let the inner work be done. Choose growth. Choose peace. Choose harmony. Choose bliss. Choose abundant blessings. And it's all there already. You just have to choose it. You just have to see it. Stop focusing on the negative and the bad and what went wrong and focus on what went right. Focus on the good and the beautiful and the exciting. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. I really am. I'll talk to you again next time. Love you, my friend. Hey, gorgeous. Just one more quick thought. Could you please, please, please do me a ginormous favor and rate and review and share the show, please. This is how, like, if I have helped you in any kind of a way, if I have given you one little tidbit of help 
or encouragement or insight in any way, please do not hesitate to email me about the change that your life has had because I just, I get off on hearing, hearing about how I've helped you. Um, it does not inflate my ego. It just keeps me going and it makes me so excited and so happy. It makes me feel like all the work I put in is worth it if I can help one of you feel better about your life. Um, do not hesitate to share my episodes with your friends. Copy it and copy the link into a text or share it at your next mom group or share it on social media. And if you do, please tag me at Britt Clarkson if you're on Instagram, um, because I love to see I love to see who's listening and what you learned and got out of any kind of an episode. Anyways, friend, I love you so much. Thank you for being here.